So folks, Dream Green is a place where you can enjoy sunny days all year round. It's surrounded by a vibrant community, access to some of the best beaches in South Florida, okay, and multiple attractions. Of course you are. Okay, but hold on, you know, you might want to consider moving to Coral Springs, Florida. But before you pack your bags, you may just want to sit tight and go ahead and listen. We've got, we've got a, some surprises here in the video for you. Kind of tell you all the things, what you need to know about moving to Coral Springs. Located in the heart of Broward County, Coral Springs is a perfect situation to be close to the beaches, close to all kinds of attractions, and close to all kinds, and even theme parks. So with an area of about 24 square miles, okay, that makes it the 15th largest city in the state of Florida. Not bad for a city that's only about 60 years old. Located in Northwest Broward County, okay, some of Coral Springs' famous local neighbors, Parkland, Coconut Creek, Parkland to the north, Coconut Creek to the east, uh, of course the Everglades to the west, Tamarack and Margate directly to the south. Now, Coral Springs is also just but a stone's throw to play to the very, very nice places like Lighthouse Point, like Boca Raton. And it's, it's within well within driving distance of bigger cities such as Miami, Fort Lauderdale, and West Palm Beach. Coral Springs offers a wide array of attractions that basically of interest for everybody. One of the most interesting attractions in Coral Springs is basically the Panthers Den. Now what this really is, it's basically, it's the practice rink for the National Hockey League team, Florida Panthers. But it, it, it's built, there's so many things that go on around over and above that. It's, it's, it's an ice skating rink where people come to learn to figure skate, they come to learn to play hockey. There's little league hockey teams that go in there. There's all types and all ages of figure skating for children all the way up to adults that figure skate. Uh, they have festivals and they have little por little parties and little parades that go on all year long. One of the most significant ones is the one that we just went to, which is basically the start of hockey season. Some of the Florida Panthers came out, signed some autographs, welcomed all the fans coming out. They had basically they had food trucks that showed up. They had face painting for the kids. They had all kinds of attractions. They even had a rock band going in the background. So it was just a wonderful, wonderful time to go out and kind of you know see what's going on in inside of Coral Springs. For art lovers, there's a Coral Springs Museum of Art, which not only features local artists and artisans and all of the things that they do, but it also goes out and attracts some national artists to come back in for some of the displays that are out there. The Coral Springs Center for Performing Arts attracts dancers and all kinds of performance arts, including theater shows, dancing, ballet, all kinds of activities that feature not only local Coral Springs residents and Coral Springs children, but it also attracts some of the, some folks from outside the area to come back in and put on some big shows, some nice shows for them. A wonderful opportunity for folks, for the residents of Coral Springs, to get to experience some of the arts and some of the culture. So for nature lovers, Paul Cypress Nature Center kind of takes you back to the way things were before all the urbanization, everything was being done. You can go experience wild mangrove swamps. You can go see kind of how things were. You'll see wildlife that was resident here in South Florida before Coral Springs even became a city. You'll get to see raccoons, you get to see possums, you get to see little baby gators. Of course, you will see the iguanas, which seem to be everywhere here in Florida, but Tall Cypress Natural Area is a place not to be missed. Also, in the heat of the summer, taking a walk down some of those, uh, some of those covered trails and covered paths, you'll, rec you'll be able to realize that basically the temperature is about seven to 10 degrees cooler. Makes for a nice little exercise where you're not basically out getting the sun beating down on you. For folks looking for shopping, Coral Square Mall basically has it all. You can get it all at Coral Square Mall. I didn't make that up. Okay, basically it, it has, has over 120 stores. It includes a Macy's furniture. It has a food court, all kinds, JC Penney's. Basically, if you can't find it there, you're gonna be hard pressed to find it anywhere in Coral Springs. For folks that are going, looking out to go shopping, in addition to all the little specialty shops that are in there, you have the Coral Square Mall. Also, you, have, if you're, you also have Behind the Walk, which is basically places like Chicken Salad Chick, which is one of Suzanne's favorite places to go. My Barber is actually out there at Behind the Walk. You can go to, uh, to, to 2 Jay's Deli out there. So it's a wonderful deli. All kinds of different places to go visit there. Do tell, why do I like the Chicken Salad Chick? Well, it's because it, I think it has something to do with the fact that our niece Alexandra went to Auburn and the folks started it in Auburn, Alabama. So, Al, this one's for you from Aunt Susan, Uncle Kev. Yes. So the Coral Springs Aquatic Center is actually was one of the really, really favorite places to go because it's, it's open with 300 plus days of sunshine every year. The place is basically open all day, every day of the year, okay? It offers swim team, it offers diving, it offers all kinds of aquatic types of things for children, for adults, for seniors. You can join competitive teams. You can just enjoy yourself there in the Olympic sized pool. Water aerobics. Yes, thank you, sweetheart. And water aerobics and I, actually even water polo too, competitive water polo. 
and last but certainly not least, Heron Bay Golf Course. Now, if you're like me and, and kind of think of yourself as a golfer, you may want to reconsider going out there because some of the folks that are there are really, really good golfers. But it's a beautiful place to go and kind of hang out. It was built to be very aesthetically pleasing. It's a nice, very, very nice golf course, competitively designed. If, you, if, if golf is one of your passions, it is not to be overlooked here in Coral Springs. So folks, if yourself or anybody you know has any questions about real estate here in Coral Springs, we certainly encourage you to reach out. Give us a call. Shoot us a text, shoot us an email, DM us, okay? Or you can jump to the head of the line by going in and clicking on the Zoom link and setting up a calendar, a calendar invite where we can sit and we can chat and talk for about 40 to 45 minutes about Coral Springs or any other real estate related questions or issues that you may have. So just feel free to reach out and let us know that we are the folks that answer the phone and we are the folks that go back and respond to the emails. Basically, Coral Springs, being a community that's only about 60 years old, okay, really prides itself on adherence to building standards and to building quality. So one of the things that you'll see here in Coral Springs is that whether it's new construction or anything being renovated, is that there is very, very strict adherence to building codes and building standards. And you'll see that in not only in new construction, how the new homes or the new properties are being built, but you'll also see it when you go to apply for a permit with the city of Coral Springs, there is a, a not insignificant amount of effort that needs to be put forth or basically some hoops that may need to be jumped through, but it's all there to make sure that everything is done in strict compliance and strict accordance with providing the highest quality sta building standards and to make sure that all the buildings, whether you're living in the building or whether you're working in a building or whether you're just visiting it like a shopping center, that those are, of the, are as safe as they can possibly be. So one of the more popular outdoor activities in Coral Springs is basically hiking, enjoying the nature preserves and the natural area. Hiking and just being outside and being outdoors. Now, the city's home to, to an abundance of parks, including this one we're in right now, Orchard Park, which has a, a beautiful wildlife area. You can kind of see how things used to be. Nice, very, very nice walkways where you can go back and you can enjoy the area. You can take a nice, peaceful, quiet walk through the way things used to be here in, in Coral Springs and in South Florida before the urbanization came through. You see the mangrove plants, see all the kind of plants and everything that are growing around. Some of the other areas is basically Cypress Park, which has over 80 acres of parkland. And it also has a very, very large number of different playing fields and ball playing fields, as well as the Sawgrass Natural Preserve and the Wildlife Hospital, where basically if animals from the, from the wild have been hurt or they've been found where they've been hurt, you can take it to the hospital there and they'll help bring them back together again. They'll help make them whole again and make them heal, help heal them. And one of the other things that Coral Springs is known for is its commitment to sports and other outdoor physical activities. And you can see this not only, you can see this at basically every level. Whether you go to any of the parks you'll see that have football fields, soccer fields, pickleball fields, tennis courts, and they have it for children, they have it for adults, and they have it, and they have it for retirees. And it's all set up so that you can spend as much time as you want to outside. Now, that kind of makes a lot of sense being down here where we actually have over 300 days of sunshine every year. So folks come down here in Coral Springs to be out inside and take advantage of all of the time you can spend outside. One of the things that's become very, very popular lately in Coral Springs is tennis. And it's basically, Coral Springs has actually gone out and built its own tennis center to kind of foster this interest and kind of encourage this interest in tennis in Coral Springs. And they'll have tennis lessons and tennis tournaments for children, for adults, and for seniors. So you'll see it's a wonderful place to be so you can experience anything and everything that's outdoors. Whoa, Kevin, don't forget about the pickleball. That's right, honey, I forgot. You keep reminding me about the pickleball. And of course, pickleball um, has become a very, very big, very, very, it's for everybody. In fact, you, even some of the, one of the things that we thought was kind of, really kind of interesting and kind of neat is that some of the other over 55 communities that are, that are basically for the retirees and for seniors, you were even seeing pickleball courts installed into, in, into those communities. So pickleball is much like tennis. It's something that's catching on very, very strong and it's really, really getting a lot of, a lot of good audience and a lot of good traction here in Coral Springs. Coral Springs, by virtue of its design and by virtue of its nature and its location, okay, is made up of a very, very diverse group of residents. Okay? As a matter of fact, they con it's referred often as a city in the country. Now, it's been long considered a melting pot where, where folks from local areas like Pompano Beach and Fort Lauderdale have, have moved to, 
folks from a little bit further out, such as areas like Miami, or maybe coming down from Orlando, or coming down from Jacksonville, have kind of come to, as well as other areas of the, of the country, and coming in from all over the world. So it's really become kind of a big melting pot. Now, one of the things that you'll see in that is you'll see that how that is basically, how that's fostered throughout the, the many festivals and the many types of celebrations that they have all year. Probably one of the most popular is a Festival of the Arts. And that's a two-day festival that they hold every year where basically everybody is encouraged to kind of come and talk about the, the arts and the culture of where, they where they're from, where they live, and kind of celebrate so they can kind of celebrate their origin and kind of celebrate what's important to them. The next one is World's Fest. That's kind of, that's a little bit more laid back and a little bit more kind of casual. Where, where you have folks that come in and they bring things from where they're from. They, there's, there's food, there's dancing, there's artwork, there's all kinds of things. So it's a much more laid back area, laid back time where folks can get an opportunity to, to experience other cultures and, and other backgrounds in a much more festive, much more laid back area where you just kind of sit around and talk, maybe have a little bit, of, little bit of food, have a little bit of something to drink, look at some of the, uh, some of the artwork and some of the things that, that, that basically define the culture of all the different folks that have come to call Coral Springs home. One of the ones that to us is, is a favorite. Now, part of that's also because I grew up in, in Virginia. They also have Winter Wonderland. Now, this is kind of a festival. This is new for a lot of folks here in South Florida. Okay, as many of them haven't seen snow and really haven't experienced the cold, the Winter Wonderland put on out near the Panthers Den and around there where you can go ice skating, you can actually have experience snow tubing and other areas. So for a lot of the kids who've grown up here and for adults that maybe have never left South Florida, it's kind of a neat thing where they get a chance to experience what the, what the weather is like in other parts of the country but they're experiencing it here in Coral Springs. The city also hosts a number of smaller events throughout the year that are kind of geared around different areas. As they have like this diff some of the different churches will put on religious festivals. The Catholic Church may sponsor an Italian festival. So the Romanian Church may sponsor a Romanian festival. The Greek Orthodox Church will sponsor a Greek festival. So, so you can kind of see and, and get experience for that. One of the things that we probably enjoy the most, just kind of going out very, very casual, is going out to the farmer's market. And they, ha they typically run every second or third Saturday of the month and they run it through the from basically April up through the end of October and you get a chance to see all the all things that are kind of local to Coral Springs so you'll have for example honey that's grown that is basically grown locally you'll experience fruits and vegetables that are grown and farmed locally and you'll get a chance to see what some of the local artisans will put out some beautiful artwork is being done one of the things that we thought was really really cool was that the gentleman that was down and he had all kinds of teas and all kinds of different uh, sauces and all kinds of different rubs and everything. So it was great. I mean, I must have spent easily 45 minutes to an hour there just kind of checking out the different kinds of teas. I am a kind of a tea fanatic. I do like my tea. Okay, but also seeing what kind of rubs that you could add on to fish and to other seafood and, and beef and pork. Very, very interesting. I learned a whole lot about the different things you can do and how you can alter the taste of things. Wonderful, wonderful experience. And again, we never would have known if we hadn't visited the Coral Springs Farmer Market. Now, You've no doubt seen a lot of information about the cost of living in Fort Lauderdale area and in the South Florida area uh, and, and, some of, and a number of our other videos. Coral Springs is not the cheapest place to live here in South Florida. In fact, it's a little bit higher. It's actually about 12 to 14 percent higher than the national average. It's not to say that it's outside of everybody's price point. So basically on a scale of 100, with 100 being the national average, Coral Springs actually ends up to be about 120, which puts it about 12 to 15 percent higher than the most of the, the national average. Now, there are other areas local to Coral Springs, for example, Boca, Fort Lauderdale, Lauderdale by the Sea, and Parkland that are far more expensive than Coral Springs. But you do get a lot for what you pay for in Coral Springs. There's a, there's a, there's, as we talked about before, there's a huge commitment to quality and building. And, that, and there's a cost that goes along with that, okay? And you'll see that cost transition into the cost of housing, which, by, which is by far the, the single most significant contributor to the higher cost of living. In the city of Coral Springs, the average sale price for the house this, this past year is, is $551,000. Now that's about a six or seven percent increase over the where it was a year ago. So you're still seeing, even even with things that are changing from a housing perspective, you're still seeing increases in the value and the uh, and the prices pricing of the houses. One of the other things that you're going to see is also with a with a with a higher price of the house, you're going to see an increase in real estate taxes. Some of those t increases are increases you you can't do anything about. It's increases in for education. It's increases in the millage rate to support what's going on. However, the city of Coral Springs, for the third year in a row, has voted to not increase the millage rate 
for property, for real property inside the city of Coral Springs. This has been a huge boon to the residents of Coral Springs and also has been a very strong incentive for people coming down here where they're seeing year over year increases in local taxes, for example, in the city of Boca Raton, in the city of Margate, in the city of Lighthouse Point, where you're seeing a year over year increase in the taxes. Coral Springs, in order to encourage folks to come down here and relocate to Coral Springs and to give them an incentive to do that, they basically, they have chosen to not, they have voted to not increase the, the millage rate over the past three years for, for here in Coral Springs. This frequency of the farmers markets and the number of both local and national grocery stores, the cost of groceries does also make up one of the higher areas for the cost of living here in Coral Springs. Now, on the positive side, okay, the cost of healthcare okay, is actually lower than the national average. Now, that may be due in part to a more healthy lifestyle that people are living down here in Coral Springs. It may also be due in large part to the number of medical facilities and the, the, the variety and the diversity of medical facilities. There is basically something for anybody who needs anything down here, whether you're looking for something that is holistic, whether you're looking coming down and looking for something from a cancer perspective. This is Sylvester Cancer Institute, you have the Cleveland Clinic, you have Holy Cross Hospital, you have Baptist Hospital, Joe DiMaggio's Children's Hospital. There's hospital and medical facilities for basically anybody who needs anything down here. And again, that contributes to the wide appeal that areas like Coral Springs have for bringing folks in here, whether you're bringing a family in, whether you're a retiree or whether you're looking to retire, whether you're in between, in betwixt and in between. The other most significant area where cost is less than a national average, ironically enough, is utilities. Now, that may be due in large part to that in other areas of the country, when it gets very, very cold, you're cranking up your furnace, you're cranking up your heater, you're burning all, all kinds of firewood and everything else that can that add to it. Now, the only thing you're really gonna run into down here in Coral Springs is that when it gets really, really hot in the summertime, you're probably gonna wanna crank your air conditioner up or basically crank the temperature down a little bit. Okay, now, in Coral Springs, unlike some of the other areas in, in South Florida, and especially in the Fort Lauderdale area, Florida Power and Light is the primary and then by far the number one electricity provider. But there are other options that you can choose from down here. If you go out and look, to, look at other aggregators, kind of reminds me of some of the things that you saw up in, in other states like Georgia, where you'll have companies that will come out and, and buy power surplus power from other companies and basically resell it at a little bit lower rate or resell it at a more favorable rate. Okay. Now, the other thing too is, is that you have the same thing with gas down here. Florida Power and Light does provide gas and they are by far the largest gas provider, but there are other aggregators that can offer that inherent competition. Another one of the reasons why utility costs here in Coral Springs and in the, in the surrounding areas are a little bit lower than a national average. Now, this may be in large part due to the centralization of the location of Coral Springs, but basically where Coral Springs is smack in the middle of three different international airports. You have West Palm Beach at the top, basically Hollywood, Fort Lauderdale in the middle, and then you have Miami down south. So, and the difference, the variance between the three of them, it's about 120 miles. So you have three different international airports to choose from around here. Now, between those three international airports, you basically have the opportunity to travel anywhere and everywhere in the globe. There are folks coming in from all over Central America, South America, Europe, Asia Pacific, Australia, Canada, anywhere and everywhere. So, and, and having that kind of that competition of being able to have all those, those airports that close together and having the, the Brightline Express train that can take you from West Palm Beach Airport all the way down to Miami Airport, having that kind of competition has actually led to, in many cases, lower airfares than going into some other places. Now, in all fairness and all transparency, I will tell you, it's been our experience having paid for flights for our kids to come visit us down here, okay, that flying into Coral Springs and Fort Lauderdale area is a heck of a lot more expensive than during the winter time than flying out, okay? And if you're thinking about coming down during one of the seasons like spring break or the holidays, just know that you will be paying a premium flying down here for flying in and around here. Now you're also, you're also only about four hours away from Naples, and about four hours away from, from the Tampa International Airport, as well as about three and a half hours from Orlando. So you really have a very, very large selection of airports uh, to choose from when, when booking your flights to come visit folks or to come down here in Coral Springs and into South Florida. This is something that is near and dear to anybody and everybody who's ever visited South Florida, okay? And it's parking. Now, anybody who's been down here before, whether you're here in June or whether you're here in January, okay? Parking is A, a pain, and B, it can be very, very expensive. Now, one of the things that the city founders of Coral Springs did is when they, when they set Coral Springs up, now keep in mind, 
Coral Springs is what is known as a planned unit development, which means that there was a lot of forethought and a lot of planning that went in to kind of make sure that everything that needed to be gotten to, you could get to easy enough and quickly enough. One of those things is parking. As a result of that, the majority of the parking here in Coral Springs is actually free, okay? There are some places where you, you may have to park in a garage and it may be 50 cents to a dollar, maybe a dollar 50 an hour to park in a garage, and it may be 50 cents to 75 cents or a buck if you park outside, but it's nowhere near as bad as it is in areas like Deerfield Beach or areas like Fort Lauderdale, where basically the cost of parking to go to a restaurant in the afternoon to go for lunch at a restaurant in, on Los Olas that may actually be more expensive than, than the meal that you have at the restaurant in Los Olas down in Fort Lauderdale. Coral Springs has done a wonderful job of trying to make sure that everything is set up and they're continually doing things to make sure that the infrastructure is there to support the increase of folks coming in that they're basically encouraging. There's a lot of planning, a lot of forth going on around that. So animal friendly or wildlife? Here in Coral Springs, Coral Springs, much like all the other areas here in South Florida, especially in the Fort Lauderdale area, is very, very animal friendly. There is, dogs are basically allowed almost everywhere. I mean, I've even seen dogs going into, going into the grocery store, okay? And there are a number of restaurants that, that will actually cater to our four-legged furry friends from the standpoint of having water bowls out there for them and little snacks for them. So it's, it is a very, very animal-friendly and a very, very dog-friendly area. In fact, a lot of the parks in Coral Springs themselves will have a separate dog park that, available for the dogs, and many of them are actually free of charge. Unlike some of the other areas in South Florida, you have to either sign up for an annual fee to use the dog park, for example, Coconut Creek, or other areas where they charge you an entrance fee through basically a pay to go in to see it. Coral Springs has a lot of dog parks that are basically free of charge. Now, as far as wildlife, Coral Springs has a lot of wilderness area. Now, in conjunction with that wilderness area, you're going to see things that you may not be used to seeing. And now folks, I'm not talking about the iguanas that you see out in the golf course. Okay, I'm talking about stuff like possums. I'm talking about stuff like raccoons. Sometimes you can even see some small gators in some of the areas in there. Now, rumor has it, and I've never seen it, I'll be careful, out, especially for Suzanne. Rumor has it, I've never seen it, okay? But there are some snakes that are out, out here in the wild. I've never seen them, but there are out here. So in Coral Springs, you will have the opportunity to basically coexist with wildlife. Another topic, another area that is a very, very significant concern to most everybody who's even contemplating coming to South Florida is traffic, okay? Now, in some respects, Coral Springs has taken a lot of the problems that other areas in South Florida have had. They fixed it. They put things in place to fix it. The lights are more synchronized. The streets are a little bit wider. Again, owning to the fact that Coral Springs was actually a planned community. Now, and the expansion of, of Coral Springs itself has also been planned. It's not like areas where they started off as maybe a rail stop and then kind of got bigger and got bigger and then got bigger and the infrastructure did not keep pace with the increase in population and the increase of density. Coral Springs, traffic can still be a bit of a bear. If you don't have to be out and about during normal rush hours, typically between 7 and 9 a.m. or between 4 and 6 p.m., then folks, stay home. Go to the pool. Go to the mall. Go hang out. Go to one of the many ball fields to go play. Go to one of the nature areas to go to the park and hang out during the rush hour. If you don't have to be out there to be out, don't contribute to the additional traffic. But if you do have to be out, Take your time, take a deep breath, recognize that everybody has equal opportunity to the road, okay? And just sit back and relax, because hey, after all, you're in paradise. So folks, so here's our big surprise. So where we are right now, we're at basically, we're at the Coral Springs Historic Covered Bridge. Now, one of the cool things about this is that this is one of the few places in Coral Springs where basically you can come and see exactly how it was 60 years ago. Now, the story behind this, this covered bridge is actually kind of a cool one. So basically what they were doing, when Coral Ridge Properties, the group that actually developed Coral Springs, when they were going ahead and they were developing this, they were getting ready to open it up for people to come down and buy land so they could ultimately buy their homes and buy everything else. They actually went out to this guy on late night TV. Now those of you that are older like me, you'll remember this guy, Johnny Carson. He came down here and he was actually the MC. They had a big, basically, property sale and barbecue down here. And Johnny Carson was, was basically one of the, the guest hosts for this. Came down here and folks would come down. They came down to this property sale and barbecue so that they could basically put a bid in on buy land. So there are a number of folks who bought land when Coral Springs, when it first started back in 1964 from Coral Ridge Properties, when they actually split all the properties up and split all the land up so but you can come down here and you can see this beautiful bridge exactly how it was with the exception of possibly the color I think it was red when they first painted it yeah barn barn door red. barn door red when they first painted it thanks Suze 
but basically exactly how it was when it was built almost 60 years ago. So that to us is a very, very cool thing. And it also speaks to the commitment of quality here in Coral Springs. So hopefully you guys have found our video to be interesting, informative, hopefully a little bit entertaining. I mean, I'm still working on my stand-up routine. Again, if you have any questions, please feel free to reach out and let us know if you would consider. If you would consider giving us a like and going ahead and sharing it with your friends and subscribing if you have done, if you have not done so. We'd appreciate it. And that way you get notified every time I drop a video. And uh, check out our other videos on the different areas such as Lighthouse Point, Deerfield Beach, Pompano Beach, Pompano Fort, Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Boca Hill. Raton, Delray Beach, Fort Lauderdale, Hillsboro. We have a plethora of videos out in this area because we are the experts. We are, we are the neighborhood experts.